The Fibonacci case is often used in job interviews for UiPath RPA developers. Here's how to solve it. You need to write out the first 12 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. We will use UiPath and down here you can see that the modern design experience must be used. It must be a while loop. You will use an online calculator, store it into a text file, followed by one second delay. Remove trailing spaces and open up this web page. Always pay close attention to the conditions. And up here we have the actual Fibonacci sequence. Here we can see that the first two Fibonacci numbers, that is one and one, and this is what this bottom line of the equation says, that if x is equal to or less than two, then it will be one. Otherwise, as we put one to x, then it will be the sum of the two previous numbers. So here it says one, one, then two, that's because one plus one equals two. Then three, that's become, because one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, and so forth. These are the 12 numbers, and here we will create the UiPath solution. So move in here. We will first be creating some helping variables. So go down to variables, mark your make, main sequence, and then you can create them. Here I will be calling my first variable x, and this is just to keep track of the rounds that equals to the x in the equation. I will choose this as an integer, since the first the round is one, I'll give it the value one. I'll also use two variables for the last Fibonacci number and the second last Fibonacci number. That is because we will add these to each other and we'll have the next Fibonacci number in the sequence. So you just do this and we will give it the start value of one. That is because, let me show you the case again, the first two numbers, that is one, one. So uh, then we will also have a string to store the actual Fibonacci sequence in. So we can print it out to a text file. So here we have the Fibonacci sequence. This will be a string and it will be empty to begin with. We will also be creating a helping variable, which we will use. So I'll say number one plus number two and this will be an integer. This will store the sum of this as we are going to need it later on. Now you can close the variable manager. The first activity that we'll use is the while activity. And that is because this task, it says that it must be a while loop. So in a job interview, if this is a requirement, make sure you use that activity, even though that you can use a lot of other activities. Here we will say, well, the condition should be that x is less than or equal to 12. We know we start at one. And then for each run of this while loop, we will add one to it. To add one to x, I'll simply just drag in in the sign. Down here, I'll press control space. I'll find my x or write an x if I'm not that lazy. And here I'll just say x plus one. So now we know that this uh, while loop will run 12 times. I can run it and you'll see that it will break quite fast. That's because um, 12 runs with nothing in is going fast. We will also be writing out the Fibonacci sequence in the end just to test it. We will use the notepad later on. So here I'll just say the Fibonacci sequence outside the while loop. In here, we will create it for these 12 runs and then we'll write it out in the right line. This is just for development purpose. Using a right line is often very nice. Then we can just go to the output console to inspect the actual sequence. Now we must do have an if up here. So we will find an if and drag it in in the start of the while. Here I want to ask, is x equal to or less than two? Then we will do something. Otherwise, we will do something else. It looks like this. So if x is less than or equal to two, let me just do this so we can see what's going on. Then if this is true, then we go in here. And if x is one or two, that's actually what this says, since x is starting at one and we add one to it. 
then we know that uh, the Fibonacci sequence will just be one and then one. So for the first two, occur two occurrences, we will just add one to the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, what this looks is that we go down here, then we'll find an assign, drag it in here. So here I will say control space, and now I can start adding things to my Fibonacci sequence. Since we will, uh, for the second run, we will have a one in this actual string, we will need to make sure, let me go over here, it's a bit more easy to see. We will need to make sure that we write everything what's in the actual sequence before we do anything. For the first run, this will just be nothing, so we will just start with the number one to string. Since the number one is one, then we can just use that. And let's also have a space in the end, so we can separate the sequence. This means that we, um, when we click OK here, we will now have an expression for the first two x's. This is just one and one, but it is a start. You can try to run your flow to see that in the output, we have now written out the first two numbers. I agree, this was the easiest one, but uh, let's continue to the else then. Here I want to say, I want to store the Fibonacci number, that is the addition of number one and two. I want to store them in a helping variable. This comes in handy in a little while. So first I'll just drag in this assign. Then I'll press control space. I'll say number one plus number two. And here I'll just do the addition. So this will just be number one, what it says. Number one plus number two. This is a helping variable. Now I can start to assign my Fibonacci sequence here, just like I did up here. Because what this is, is simply just, I say, assign. I go down here, then I'll find the Fibonacci sequence. And again, let me go over to the set value, press control space, I'll say whatever is in the Fibonacci sequence. And then I'll add the result of this up here. So that'll be number one plus number two. Since this is an integer, I will add the dot to string method like this, so I can write it out. We still need to save um, what, what's ever in here because with this, the number one and number two will always be one. So what I want to do now, so after the first run here, then this will of course be two, we will add two to it. Then we will store the previous number one as now number two, because that's the second last number. And what this looks like will be an assign. So now number two will equal number one like this. And we will also be giving a new number to number one because that's the latest Fibonacci number. So I'll be adding in an assign press control space and try to understand this logic. I know that this can seem a lot, but try to do it with me and get your head around it. You will not learn it just by passively sitting and watching. So control space, and now I will store the number one number, that's the Q and Fibonacci number, we calculated that up here. So here I'll just do like this. Now I have what I need. So, but what this means is that, uh, just uh, to see you here, we also need to make sure that we have a, a trailing space um, because, um, oh, sorry, that was this one up here. And that is because when we keep adding numbers, just like we did in the other one, we will need to have a space. But this means that we will have a trailing white space for the last round. And as you can see in the case, it says, remember to remove trailing white spaces. So, and um, that's what we will do here. So what we can do here is that we know that we have a trailing white space. That is after the last number. Then I can just go down here, say dot, and then I can find a either a trim or trim end. Since I know I only have white spaces in the end, I'll just use a trim end, but both will work. Now we can try to run the solution. This will print out all the Fibonacci numbers, at least the 12 first numbers, since we defined that in the while. If we have um, added uh, this to, for example, 100, this would have written out the first 100 Fibonacci numbers. But we'll just take 12 and we'll try to run and verify that we can get it out. 
then the rest of the solution will be very easy. Here it is, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and all the way up to 144. This is the Fibonacci sequence. Now we will be using the online calculator to do the actual calculation. But I recommend always doing this logic first. This will make you understand the concepts better. So let us just open this one here. This is the calculator that we're going to use. We will not press buttons. Well, we will do it for plus and equal. Otherwise, we will just send it up to here. So the solution looks like this. Go back to UiPath. So um, I want to use an application slash browser. Here it is a browser. So I'll find a use application browser. I'll drag it in here in the beginning. So um, here I need to indicate an application to automate. And if I click here, I will simply just use my browser here with the calculator open. And there you go. We can now open this one here. So I want to have my while inside this do container. This means that we can do browser automation inside this while loop. I can just do this if I want to see what's going on. You easily drag it in. Now it's in my do container. So here, let me just open it again. Then that is fine. There's no calculation here. We will not use the online calculator. But in the else, we will need to fix something. Because we will not just do the easy solution here, we'll need to do it with activities. The first thing we'll find is a type into. Go up here, search for a type into, and drag it in here in the else in the beginning. Here I will choose indicating Chrome, and now I need to say what do I want to do? Well, first I want to type something in this field, so I simply just click here. This will create the selector. And here we can see that we have a fuzzy selector for this. That is the best selector that uh, has been found. And we are ignoring the text. So this looks static, but we might need to change it when we test it. So for now, I'll just click confirm. This one is fine. Here you can see that uh, UiPath now says that this is not the way to do it. We can choose manual repair or auto repair. I'll just choose the manual repair. Here we can either choose a better anchor or we can just create a, a strict selector. So um, to verify that this works, you can see that it now it's now here. We might need to have an anchor when we test it, but let's just click confirm and let's try to write something in. Here I will write in the number one, so control space. Since this, since this is an integer, I will again add the to string method like this. And one thing I'll also need to do is always rename your activity, either right click rename or press F2. So this one will be type into and then I'll say number one. I'll also go over here because um, here you can see that I'm emptying the field. That is fine since this is the first number. So uh, we'll just empty a single line. That is completely fine. Let's see if we can write out all number ones into this browser. So I'll run it again. Otherwise, we will have to fix the selector. Here it says 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. This works. Of course, we'll need to do the rest of it. So now I will have the plus button and this one will be a click, a drag and a click. Here I'll indicate the plus sign, which is here. And this one seems stable. This is a fuzzy selector, that's fine. And you can even see some of the plus down here in the image. I'll click OK. So now we are clicking the plus. We will also type in number two. And what I can do here is just Control C, mark this plus, Control V, that will paste it in just below the plus. So what I will do here is that I will first rename and again, press F2 or right click rename. I'll say type into number two, and I'll also change this variable. This will be, oh, sorry, number two. And I will also make sure, and here I forgot a dot. I like these life bills. I think that uh, we all learn a lot through them. And you can see my thought process as well. So over here, I want to say empty field. I'm not interested in that because we already have a number and a plus. So in the empty field, 
we will say none. And this is again, just to make sure that we keep the number one and then the plus in it. Otherwise we couldn't do the calculation. Then we'll also need to press the equal button and this one will be another click. So I will indicate that one here and I'll have the equal button. Again, we will inspect the selector. This looks fine. Uh, the best way if you are path just just not tell you to do something just think it's great and test it So now we will test the calculation we still don't store it we don't grab the result from this calculator so what we're doing is simply just see that the, if these ui path modern activity actually works then we can do it so one plus one two two plus and here it says two plus one three plus two five then we'll should get eight and this actually uh, seemed to work. I'll just uh, let it run up all the way up to 144, which were the last Fibonacci number. So um, again, here uh, we have come a long way. Now we can write out uh, the first Fibonacci number and we can do the UI automation tied to it. So right after the equal sign, go find a get text and drag it in in the end here indicate what we want to uh, grab out here's the result and i click here and now we need to be careful again um, so we can see that this is a fuzzy selector this looks well okay but if i go down to the anchor then you can see that this image says uh, 89 plus 55 this is not really cool because that means that whenever this is not present, we can't find this anchor down here. So what I will do is simply just to create a strict selector again. That means that I go up here, I um, untick this and I uh, throw away the anchor. So now I'll just have a strict selector. And if this is not, this is fine. This is the tag input. I don't think we have any other input fields here. If this is not enough, we could create an anchor over here or here. Those ones are more stable or even the units or something like this. Let's just try to do this and then I can click save. So now we are saving the result. And again, let me press F2. This is also something that will beautify your solution if you're able to actually rename your activities. Well, this is best practice. And here, I even though that this is actually the same number, what we are trying to accomplish here, the number one plus two, since this is saved to a string, I'll need to press control K and then create a new variable. Here I'll say number one plus number two, then I'll say string, press enter. Now a string variable is being created to us. Then I can just fix this expression down here and then we should be done. So if I go over here to set value, this one will not be here. This one were just a calculation. Now we will use the string from up here and we will convert it to an integer first. That's because we store this number one plus number two in an integer format. So now the solution should be fine. Let's try to test it that this actually work and then we can just print it out to notepad afterwards. So we'll do these things. And if you like this video, if this video helps you, you can really help me a lot by giving the video a thumbs up. That will improve my reach and make me able to do even more videos. Thanks a lot. And if you want to have a case solved or anything, let me know in the comments. I might pick your video as the next topic. I made some data scraping ones. I made some API calls for people. And I really want, love to solve real life cases. So now we're done and let's go down to output. There you go. Our Fibonacci sequence is well written out. Now we will solve the rest of this. This is to write it to a text file. So I go all the way down here and let me just uh, minimize this. So now we are not printing it out to a right line. We will save it to a text file. So go up here find a write to text file here and drag it in either before or um, in front of the right line doesn't matter so what text do we want to write out well i just used this expression up here this, we saw that this worked then we'll also write to a file name 
Yeah, I'll just choose this. And let me just put it inside the UI path directory. Of course, you can choose to. Um, and this works like this. Of course, you can choose any other directory. I just choose a relative path to this project. Let's see. And now we can delete this. Let's see the project description that was here. We also need to have one second delay. This is very easy. This is something that's often uh, going to be stated like in a part sentence. So you don't really discover it. But this is just to test you again. Here we will add a one second delay. So go up here and then you'll find a one a delay and then we will add the one second. So here and let us just check the order of this again. So save the result uh, to a text file followed by one second delay, one second delay. So go down here. And here we will need to have a one second delay. We'll also need to open up this page in the end. So uh, let's just see what this is. This is just a done Google search. So I'll grab it up here or I can simply just use uh, the uh, use application uh, use application browser sorry again here in the end so here i'll find an use application browser and put it in here indicate the application that you want to automate this is it now uh, we are opening this since um we don't really want to close this down this might need to be visible then i can just go over to close and i'll choose never so we can see what's going on now let's actually try to close both of these and see the solution will work with everything what we have added so far. Congratulations if you built this with me. You really learned a lot. A lot about logic, a lot about UI automation, that is browser automation here. And you you can put things together and pay attention to details all things that they will test you for in a UI path API developer job interview. Let's check the actual text file in a few seconds to see that this works. So uh, 144. This is it. And we're done. So if I go first to the browser, you can see that we now have this one open. That was fine. And again, I will go to or not again, I'll go down here. And then I will try to find my UI path directory. This is here. Here I have the Fibonacci. And you should be able to see the Fibonacci text. I'll drag it in here. This is it. And you can see we don't have any trailing white spaces. The next job interview UI path use case is right here on the screen, you should click that to make sure you land the next UiPath job. See you.